Now that we know a little bit about what polynomial functions look like, we're going to talk about the end behavior of polynomials. It turns out the end behavior of polynomials is dependent upon two qualities or characteristics of the function that we looked at in the last video. So in the last video, we looked at something called the degree of the polynomial, which basically we understood as the highest power. And then we also looked at something called the leading coefficient. And once you found the term that had the highest power, the leading coefficient is the constant multiple out front of that variable term. So with the degree, we will care about whether the degree is even or odd. And with the leading coefficient, we're going to care about whether it was positive or negative. And using these criteria, we'll be able to establish what the ends of the function look like. So just really quick, what I mean by ends of the function is when we graph, right, we typically think of a function graph looking something like, like this, right? Um, when we talk about the ends of the function, we're literally just saying, what do the arrows do on the left extreme and right extreme of the graph? So the graph that I just happened to draw randomly, we would summarize its end behavior with arrows like this, because you can see that on the left side, the behavior of the function is to point down towards negative infinity. On the right side, the behavior of the function is to point up towards positive infinity. So end behavior for us, we could express in words, but we'll typically just use little arrows to mimic that end behavior. So let's talk through the possible cases. As you may have already been thinking about, because for the degree you can have either even or odd, and for the leading coefficient you can have positive or negative, it turns out that creates four different possibilities. So let's lay them all out. And I'm just gonna go ahead and use a coordinate grid to separate out these four cases. So let's start by talking about the degree the degree can be even or odd. So let's set up two options where we investigate the even. And then we'll look at two options where the degree could be odd. The reason we need two of each is because we can pair with each of those respectively a positive leading coefficient or a negative leading coefficient. And then we'll get to some actual examples too. So this is laying out really the, the overview of possibilities. It would be good to definitely kind of draw this out for yourself. Um, really, it becomes quite intuitive once you've looked at examples. So maybe right now it feels like, oh my gosh, I gotta remember a lot, but um, start applying it to some examples and I think you'll feel really comfortable. So just, just to flip back real quick, I'm using blue to denote the degree on our summary sheet. Degree is, again, the highest power. And then orange is the leading coefficient, so the number out front. So for example, if I gave you the function uh, 2x cubed plus 3x, I would say the degree is 3 because that's the highest exponent we see in the polynomial function. And the leading coefficient would be positive 2 because that's the number multiplied out front of that highest powered term. So let's go ahead and give ourselves the summary with little arrows, and then we'll do an example or two. All right, turns out if the degree of the polynomial is even, then both ends want to do the same thing. If the leading coefficient is positive, they both, both ends of the function, will point up. So a great example of a positive leading coefficient even function is something as friendly as x squared. So if you guys think about your knowledge of the graph of our base quadratic function, both ends go up. Uh, if it's still an even degree, but now the leading coefficient is negative, both ends want to do the same thing. This time, they're both going to point down. And a great example of that, if you wanted just to look at the graph or something, would be Take that quadratic function and make it open downwards by putting a negative out front. So in my mind, what I think about for even is I just remember that when the polynomial has even degree, both ends do the same thing. 
and then it's the positive or negative that helps me um, figure out is it that both ends are going up or is it that both ends are going or opening down. Cool, so kind of similar analysis now will happen with odd. Um, for odd, the ends are always going to do opposite things. When it's odd and positive, the end on the left will go down and the, the end on the right will go up. That gets flip-flopped when it's odd and negative. So odd and negative, now we're going up on the left uh, and down on the right. Okay, so that would be, again, just sample end behavior. So it's kind of like we're cutting out the core part of the function and looking just at the ends. Just to give a, a great example of a base graph for an odd positive, that would be something like x cubed. So if you want to graph y equals x cubed in decimals, you'll see the ends doing the same thing we just noted here. And then a great example for the odd and negative would be same function, just throw a negative out front. Cool. So when the degree is odd, the ends do opposite things. Awesome. So again, jot that down for yourself. And then as we do a couple examples, this will become a lot more clear. Let's just end this video by looking at two examples. And I'll go back to some normal paper here. So let's say that we were given the function f of x equals um, 5x to the 7th plus 11x squared minus 6x plus 1. And we are asked about the end behavior. So indicate end behavior. If it helps, you for sure can, oops, behavior. You can start by writing down what is the degree and what is the leading coefficient. Basically here, we're going to see that the degree is odd, right? I don't even care so much about the number. I know 7 is an odd number. And then the leading coefficient we can see here is positive. Again, I don't care so much about the number I care. Is it positive or negative? So 5 would be a positive number. So when it's odd, both ends do the same thing. When the leading coefficient is positive, the function basically um, rises from left to right. If it's negative, then it would have fallen from left to right. So that would be the end behavior. You can easily check this by popping it in your graphing calculator or Desmos, as we've been using um, Desmos.com. D-E-S-M-O-S.com is a great place to graph. Um, so highly encourage you to, to play around a little bit for yourself and see this. Let's just do one more. Um, this time we're given the function f of x equals, and we've got a negative x squared multiplying to a 5 plus 2x cubed, um, and then we have a plus 8x to the fourth. Cool. Same game, determine the end behavior. So it's nice when a function is provided to you in what we call the standard order, and that would be when it's actually from highest powered term to lowest powered term. That's not what's happening here, so we're going to do a little bit of groundwork and rewrite it, clean it up a bit. Um, likely you're just dying to distribute this negative x squared to all the terms inside so that we can actually identify which term has the highest power, what is that highest power, and what's the multiple on that term. So I'm just going to take a quick moment to rewrite this as negative 5x squared minus 2x to the fifth. Uh, minus 8x to the 6th. And that comes just from distributing the negative x squared into the three terms inside the parentheses. I could even take one more step and reorder, just so that I don't, in error, want to call uh, the negative 5x squared term the term that I get the degree and leading coefficient from. So it's easy to make that kind of error. So what I'm going to do is reorder so that my term with the highest power comes first. We tend to get used to looking up front for that highest power. And then it's easy for me to tell now that the degree is 6, which would be even. And the leading coefficient is negative 8. So again, that's negative. So in terms of indicating the end behavior, 
we're going to take into consideration it's even, which means both ends do the same thing. And because the leading coefficient is negative, both ends go down. So I don't know why it kind of makes sense to me. Negative is like a frowning and positive is like smiling. So when it's negative, it's like you have the ends of a frown. So that would be the end behavior for this function. So we are well on our way to an understanding of polynomial functions. And I hope the end behavior is making a little bit more sense.